I'm going to talk today about using iNaturalist, eBird, and Python to become a community scientist. Hopefully that's not a surprise. The actual Python talk is in the other room. Um, none of these photos have attribution because they're all my photos, but I tried to put the Maori name or the Te Reo name for all the birds at the bottom, so that should be fun. Um, content warning, there are bugs. Uh, there are dinosaurs, many of them, but they're all birds now. Uh, I will mention genocide in the next slide, and privilege is pretty much everywhere. So just be aware. Um, so, ko wayao Richard Latour, ahakoa. Ko Richard Grant Latour, to goinga. No Europe, oku tapunga. I say Europe because, obviously by my ancestry, I came from Europe, but I also grew up in Indakana, which is over there, which is now known as Vermont or New England. Uh, I mentioned genocide because this is one of my direct ancestors who helped found America, which really sucks because he was an asshole. Um, and these are some of my actual family who are really nice. Um, well, most of them. Um, which is why I'm trying to do Maori stuff. Uh, I now live here, which is really exciting. Um, I do not speak today, so I'll speak the rest of this in English, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, who is this Richard Litauer anyway? I am a normal person. I say that because I'm not a, any scientist or anything. I don't have any accolades. That's me. Very normal. Uh, I am a linguist. Uh, that's me painted in blue because I used to be fluent in Not V from the movie Avatar, which is a horrible movie. Don't watch it. Um, I'm a software developer. Uh, I'm an open source person. I do those things. Uh, I'm only the interim ED at GNOME. Gnome is very big and awesome, and you should all donate and go to the Foundation's talk or something. Uh, but yeah, that's what I do at the moment. That's an awa, which I think means river. Uh, what is community science? Well, there's no ex exact definition. Uh, generally means amateur or non-professional contributions, also called citizen science. That's a horrible term because it means people who only have visas should be able to contribute. So community science is much better. It's at scale, which is great. Hey, let's all contribute to science at scale. Uh, and it's useful for research, because now we have all these people donating to science, all their observations. Uh, and it skews incredibly towards rich, educated white people, which is why I mentioned privilege. Everything I say should be held against that backdrop. Um, that doesn't mean other people are excluded, it's just a lot less welcoming for them. Um, this is a caudal felted scale, which is a kind of insect, it's pretty sweet. Um, now, what is science? Science is great. Uh, this is a silver fern collected by Banks and Solander. Uh, I saw this at an awesome, at Tapapa. Uh, there was a, a showing of the back gallery. So this is a silver fern that was actually from that era. That's my photo, which is cool. Um, and that's science, right? That's what we think of when we think of science. Rich white Europeans going to New Zealand and taking stuff. Um, but this is also science. Um, this is a silver fern, and it was photographed by me. Um, and it was in Ohakuni um, two years ago when I first visited Aotearoa. And you can see the observation on iNaturalist, which is a website, which is really cool. So science, but also science, right? I left it there. It's kind of nice. This is also science. This is the eBird checklist from the walk where I photographed that silver fern. So you can see I saw these birds. I went on a nice little walk for an hour. Uh, that's the first time I ever heard a long-tailed coal, which you may know as a cuckoo. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, so, what is this thing? This is eBird. This is eBird. eBird is a community science website for logging uh, manu, particularly, you know, birds. Uh, this is the Takahe, which you can see in Zealandia. If you have the time and you haven't been, you should totally go. Um, and eBird allows you to have different protocols for logging observations of birds, stationary, traveling, pelagics. You can upload audio and photo, and you can do it for science, uh, which is pretty cool. It also has these things called regions, where you can see where other people have seen birds in various areas. You can see, track the diversity. You know, there are going to be no flamingos on this map. That'd be really weird. Uh, and there's things called hotspots. So you can see people have gone around and said, hey, this is a cool place to see birds. There's Zealandia up there, those four in a line, kind of like Orion. And uh, here, that's my house. Uh, it's right next to a reserve, so I turned it into a hotspot, which is cool. I get to see what birds I've seen there. Um, you have a lot of users, like a million of them. It's freaking massive. Uh, and you can also get alerts. Uh, Hamish Johnston, who I haven't met yet, but hopefully it's September 1st, at the Pelagic trip, you should all come. Um, Sar Searle bunting, 
at Moa Point. And so I immediately went out into my car and drove there and photographed this bird. How cool is that? Um, eBird functions by having reviewers who get very stressed and their hair turns white, as you can see by this person. Um, this is the Popocatea, which in, uh, in English is called a whitehead. Um, they're the people who email and be like, did you really see a MOA? I don't think you saw a MOA. <laughs> Show me how you saw a MOA. Uh, it's kind of fun, but also kind of like, ugh. iNaturalist works differently. This is one of the bugs. Uh, iNaturalist is for all life, all MOMO, which is the best word ever. I just keep thinking of Avatar, the other one, the better one. Um, <laughs> You can upload photos and audio, and there's this thing called research grade, which means someone else was like, yes, that is what it is. I uploaded a bellbird, someone else was like, yes, that's a bellbird, which means it's research grade, which is great. Uh, you can also have comments. On eBird, there's no comments, so all the commenting and all the spicy stuff happens like para eBird, but on iNAT, it happens right there on the main channel. So someone was like, I don't think you can really identify that to the right stick insect species, but you can do it to the genus, and I'm like, okay, cool, damn. But kind of fun. Um, when I first came to New Zealand two years ago for a month, then swiftly two months, because Toyotas are in sense, um, I wanted to see a 1,000 species. I got to 875 research grade, which was really fun. All I did was photograph everything. My girlfriend has an entire album of Richard looking at stuff instead of her. Um, she's lovely. I wish she could be here. Uh, she's looking for a job in UX. Her name's Julia. Um, but Here's stuff you can do. You can see you know, the boundaries and what you have and observations and filter, and it's really, really cool. There's better maps than eBird because it's more about mapping, and it's just awesome. Um, there are no pythons in New Zealand, uh, which is kind of sad. I point this out because at some point you may be wondering when are we going to get to Python, and I'm sorry. That's the end of the talk. There's no Python. Great. No pythons here, nothing to do. Uh, this is Hobbiton. You should all go. Um, so here's some of the cool stuff I like using code for to help me with these platforms. You obviously don't need code to use these platforms. They're made for people who don't know code. They're made for you to just go and use them, and you all should, if you like. You don't have to, you don't have to. Um, but you can do some cool stuff. So here's some stuff that I did. This is Nalbatross. Uh, I am the eBird reviewer for three islands in the South Atlantic, uh, St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan de Cunha. You've probably heard of St. Helena, that's where Napoleon died. Um, but I sometimes need to find all the eBird user checklists that people have submitted from that area. Kind of creepy if you think about it, um, but it happens. So here's some Python that I wrote, which helps me do that. Um, I say I wrote uh, this one in particular, might be a bit chat gpt -e, um, but I told it what to do. And I also could write this, and I also have written it before by hand. It's just easier because I help with errors and stuff. Uh, super simple. This one needs eBoard export, exports, so you can export all the data from eBoard, which is great. Um, and Python just helped me find them all. So in this case, there was a dude who was logging a ton of stuff really badly, and I had to look at all of his checklists and be like, <sighs> I will write an email. Um, here's some other cool stuff. So another eBoard reviewer for Greenland asked me, hey, could you give me better maps of all of the Suti Shear waters, which is also a species here, which is really, really cool. Uh, ha ke ke ke. Um, which sounds a lot like a Hawaiian bird, I realize, but it isn't. Anyway, um, useful for finding ranges, maybe a bit specialized. So what I did was I made this really cool code. Uh, I did this longhand, not everything in ChatGPT. Um, and I made a bounding box using the eBird export, and then if it was in that bounding box, I shimmed it to a different data file, and now you can see all those mappings of here are all the sooty shear waters in the North Atlantic. So that's pretty cool, right? That's useful. That helps someone who doesn't know code be able to figure out what's the distributions of birds in this area so I can be better at telling other people that they saw the wrong bird. Kind of fun. Um, so it's also kind of interesting because everyone's like, Greenland, that's just one place, right? And he's like reviewing all of Greenland. And Greenland is just massive. It's like not even close to one place. Birds at the bottom are totally different than birds at the top. Um, cool, so that's eBird. Uh, here's INAT. So for instance, I wanted to find new research grade species because that's what I want to do. I want to show how cool I am to myself, right? So 
Um, sometimes you can't, well, like on iNaturalist itself, it can't show you what species you've seen that have recently been identified as research grade. You can see species that you've recently put up, and you can see species that have, you've seen recently that are research grade, but you can't see ones that are maybe from a year ago that someone just made research grade, which is a really small subset of things. But it matters to me because I have slight autism. Um, and so it's useful to see what is new. And so what I did was I made this. Uh, this script is kind of close to that. What it does is it gets me any species from yesterday that I hadn't seen before. So on the day that I ran this, this pseudocar, pseudo, Sudar, the, R, the AR is really annoying in this one. Sudar, not pseudo, Sudar copagia discolus was a, a shell I hadn't seen in Wellington. But the day I did this, yesterday was like the first day. Oh, cool. Um, this one's really fun because there's just not a lot of people out there reporting it. It's just very rare. Um, here's another one that happened. Uh, New Zealand common bag moth. I saw this walking past the library. This is also known as Vara Atua, the House of the Spirit, or Kopi, uh, or Henerauka Tauri, uh, and you can all please correct me later. And this is literally the goddess of Maori flute music. It's, it's like the ugliest insect possible. Like, look at it. This is not a pretty insect, but how cool is it? And I put it in this special bit here because the whole point of the talk is that I got curious about this little piece of crap on a wall, and now I'm learning about the goddess of Maori flute music, which is exciting. And it's cool to be excited. And when you get excited, you learn stuff. Uh, this is a traveling treasure flower. It was introduced. I'm not interested. I'm probably going to forget it. It's kind of pretty. Cool. Um, so yeah, sometimes you want to find things you haven't seen. eBird gives you these awesome lists that tell you, uh, here are the birds you haven't seen in your region. Go find them. Um, it doesn't tell you exactly more than that, which is not really useful, but it's great. On INAT, you can kind of see things you haven't seen, but it's not great. So what I want to do is filter other observations in an area. So here, what I did was I extract the unique species from my Wellington observations, uh, and then I downloaded all the exports for Tapotaranga Reserve, which is down next to Island Bay, um, or Ophiwa Bay, and I just filtered the ones that weren't in there. So I learned really quickly, the most popular thing on INAT, which other people have logged that I haven't seen, is the jewel anemone, uh, which makes sense. I don't go in the water much. I have to figure that out. I have a wetsuit, but I don't have goggles, so I got to learn that. Uh, bastard trumpeter is apparently a fish. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what's going on there. Uh, Megaoptera novae anglei australis. Anyone know what that is? Anyone? I was going to throw you. Huh? It is big. It's the next one. It's the southern subspecies of the humpback whale. So it's cool. It didn't filter that out, so this code needs some help. Um, and I went through and learned what all these things are, and they're all really difficult, small things you can see in the water. So cool, I gotta, I gotta get on that. Um, I mentioned in the, in like the talk for this, and like the little thing that JavaScript would come up. I'm a JavaScript programmer. I use Python when I have to. I like Python. It's actually a lot easier than JavaScript most of the time. Um, and sometimes I use Bash. Here's an example of birdinginvermont.com, where eBird doesn't give you towns. So I'm like, screw that. So naturally, I made a website with D3 and React where you can see all the data for the towns. And this is really cool because this is also useful for the towns themselves to be like, oh, these species are seen here. Uh, Werner's Grants, this is the one in yellow way at the top right. It's population zero. Um, and those are the only birds that have been seen there. So someone should go look for a black-bellied whistling duck. Good luck. Um, I also built this cool thing for the Vermont Birds Records Committee where you can put in a species and a town and be like, is this rare? And they'll be like, yeah, you should report that. So that's fun. Um, I also did this thing when I was there, cool, where this is where I used to live in Montpelier, and I made all the hotspots, or the hotspots where some of them were there already, and I wanted to get an email every morning, so I hit the API, both of these sites have APIs, and I made this Python script um, with the help of an awesome African developer um, whose name I'm just blanking on because I haven't talked to him in two years, and I apologize to him. I will tweet that later on Mastodon. Um, and what's really cool is that every morning I would get an email saying, Dear Richard, I have the honor to be your obedient servant, because I watched Hamilton recently. Um, I changed it to hey there when I started emailing this to other people too. But it's what hotspots haven't been birded on this day of the year. So I can go and just make sure that they also have coverage, which is really fun. I wanted to have this slide for Wellington, 
but apparently moving to a new continent takes a lot of time, and it's just really difficult. So I submitted this talk before I moved here, and I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing with this crap. Uh, so this is a cock. Uh, it's not an owl. I know you mentioned I might have owls in this talk. Uh, I think I'm going to be working on building a machine learning platform that'll be open source to help you identify birds automatically using remote recording units, which is work that I've already started doing in Vermont for other things like Yellow Rail, which hasn't been seen there before. So I put all these audio moths out in the field, my canoe, and then I gathered them all, and then they came up with no positive data whatsoever, which is very sad, but that's fine. I'm gonna try to do it better here. Uh, I may be working with Kaka because there's a ton of them in Zealandia, and that's very close to Vic, which is very close to here, and there's also people already working on this sort of stuff. So I'd like to figure out if they have individual bird calls. If you'd like to talk more about this, come see me after class. Um, now, why is this a Python talk? This is a cool talk where I use some Python. And this is the one thing where I actually had speaker notes because I used to have a stuttering problem, so I can't rehearse because I'll just stutter. And I can't find those speaker notes now. So I'm just going to try and ad-lib it. Um, this is a gall midge. There's a fly that did this to this tree which is really cool. It's probably nondescript because it's really hard to isolate that in a bell jar and then wait for the gallmage to emerge and then on, on the one day it does emerge, put it on a slide and figure out by its genitals what species it is. Science. Um, I identified this because I got curious and I learned that gallmages exist and that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't familiar with these platforms and familiar enough to actually go around and be curious about writing code for them and figuring things out. Uh, I don't see that as any different than being curious about what's going on with open parentheses, close bracket in QCut in Pandas for Python, which is a weird way of doing intervals, apparently. <laughs> for me, it's the exact same part of my brain, being like, oh, I want to do this thing? That's curious. What's important to me about code, which no one really told me enough when I was younger, is that you don't have to like code for code. You can like code because of what it does for you later, or for what it does to help you improve your knowledge of the natural world. Here we are in a totally monocultural, horrific echo chamber of a place where there's no ferns and there's no birds in here, and that makes me sad. And we also have masks on to keep life from also interacting with us, which is kind of good. Um, and I, I just prefer to remember all the time that we're part of a larger world, and code helps me do that. So that's why this is a Python talk. Um, I use Python to do that too. Yay! Uh, we'll, won't be useful on Mars. Sorry, Deb. But it's cool. Um, that's all I really wanted to say. Thanks for listening. And uh, I think I have 10 minutes left, which is brutal. So I talk really fast, for which I should have apologized earlier. Um, thanks. OK, so have I switched it on with actually? Yes, I cool. have. Okay, so Richard is going to take questions. Uh, we are, as you saw in the uh, plenary session, we are going to take questions by uh, throwing the question cube. Uh, when you throw it, please just say, I don't know, yeet. I think, just say yeet so that people know it's coming. Uh, I think we have, uh, also a reminder that questions are for asking for more information from Richard. If you would like to present your own information, please just submit next year to the CFP. I think we have <laughs> one up the front. <laughs> yeet. Hello. Hello. It's all right. Hello. Oh, hello? OK, cool. Um, you said about um, uh, things being reviewed by another person. Uh, does that be anyone can review a thing and say it's another person? Interesting question. So eBird reviewers. So on iNaturalist, anyone can review anything, and it's the best thing in the world. Uh, most of the people who review some of the stuff are actually professionals. Uh, Leon Perry, who works as the person at Tipapa on Botany, has reviewed some of my stuff, which makes me excited and cool. Um, you have to have time, and time means money and privilege. So it's not just anyone. It's normally rich, educated, white, democratic, industrialized people. Um, eBird, the reviewers are volunteers, but they generally have to be chosen, and they're chosen using the same arcane, horrible volunteer institutions as anywhere else, meaning you have to know the right people and be around for a while and be trusted in the field. And then someone's like, oh yeah, I like that person's interpersonal relationships with me personally and my friends who look like me. And it's not great. And so a lot of the reviewers tend to be older white men. Uh, that sucks. 
Um, I don't have a way of fixing that. Um, and it's hard to figure out who they are. And generally, you just get an email later saying, that was a mallard, you're wrong. And we could do better. But yes, that's the answer. All right, we have another question behind you. Ah, um, do you, so, okay, I naturalist. I actually have it as an app on my phone. Very cool, cool. very fun. Um, do you think it would be like foreseeable to have similar editions, but for fungi instead of birds? Because it's a whole different kind of idea. Yes, so iNaturalist isn't limited to birds at all, which is cool. eBird is. iNaturalist lets you do anything, and it lets you do fungi. Fungi are particularly difficult because you can't tell in the field whether they're morphologically one species or another. Uh, case in point, in Tapadango Reserve, an ochre reserve down next to my house, I found woodier mushrooms. And technically, there was a paper that came out two years ago that says that the woodier mushrooms are all are something like Araucaria, it's like Ar Araucalaria or something, uh, Nova Zealandii. And I'm like, cool, it's got to be this species. At which point, the person who works on the fungarium at uh, not yeah, land care, uh, Manaki Fenua, um, was like, we don't use that species here. That paper was crap. Uh, I'm <laughs> obviously paraphrasing. Um, and it's going to just be this species or this genus. And I'm like, crap. And then my real question is, can I go harvest them? Because I kind of want to make soup, but also it's a reserve. <laughs> so if you know how to answer that, let me know. I haven't taken them y yet, and I may <laughs> never. Um, but it's, fungi is really hard. I saw someone say, don't even take photos of fungi in New Zealand because there's like so many species that we just don't know. Um, my main suggestion is you should join the Wellington Botanical Society because it's the closest thing I can think of to fungi. And we are awesome. Our AGM just happened. Everyone got voted in without any like drama and it was so different than open source, I was just smiling the whole time. <laughs> uh, so, yes. I wish I could, I'm down south, so. Not well, email. Yeah. Cool. All right, next question over there. Hey, uh, so I have a question. So there's a million people doing this stuff. Um, how is it actually used? If I go out, take some photos of things that I don't quite know what they are, how does it work uh, for like identifying them, first of all? Uh, and second of all, uh, yeah, how, how is it useful to anyone? Great question. So different for each platform. Um, community science as a whole means that people get to aggregate in general, and therefore scientists get to see from the aggregate dirty data some general patterns that emerge and then use those. eBird is much more on that scale. Uh, they're more interested in at scale because it's showing stuff, especially the negative data. For instance, if you say a complete checklist, I saw all the birds and I'm reporting them all, it says there are no flamingos in New Zealand, again, which is great. Um, because scientists can be like, we know from the range maps that not a single one of the million checklists from New Zealand has a flamingo. Useful. Um, I once got an email saying that my recording of a ruby crowned kinglet was used and downloaded by scientists to find different subspecies that have their own dialects. That is awesome. That is really cool. And it was even in the paper. I was like one of the people that was like mentioned. I wasn't an author, which is sad, but that's fine. Um, INAT is a whole lot better because you get a lot of people who are really experts who go through and ID everything. And so you get much more quality, fine grained data. Um, both of them can be used in many different ways. As an eBird reviewer, my job is really interesting because I'm just trying to maintain the quality of the database, and I don't know how it's going to be used. I just want to see a cool database. Um, so go use it, I guess. Uh, can I just uh, ask like one small uh, follow-up question? Um, yeah, if it's quick. Awesome. Uh, if I use iNaturalist or eBird, what, uh, what, should I, what should I look out for most? Obviously, I'm not going to be taking every photo of every species. Um, what, what's what's going to be most useful? Really easy trick uh, answer to that question. Whatever is interesting to you. Um, and for anyone here, if you want to talk about this stuff, I'm giving this talk instead of the talk about Q-cut intervals and in pandas, because this is what I'm interested in, which means I want to talk about it later. So come talk to me. All right, we have cool. another question in this area, the, the gray jacket. Yikes, thank you. Um, do you make your code available anywhere and do you post your photography anywhere? Uh, yes, I make uh, my code available on GitHub and I can send you the links for that. Some of the code in here isn't necessarily available because they're really small scripts that really you could just write on your own. But like birdinginvermont.com is all on GitHub and I have more. Um, 
photographs. I upload all of my photographs of all Manu to iNaturalist, of birds that are good to eBird. And I also have a website where I'm trying to get better at being like, I'm a photographer um, <laughs> by myself. Uh, so yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. Um, also Instagram for highlights. Thank yep. you. There was one, two rows in front of you, maybe just pass it. Yep. <laughs> um, I was wondering, how do, do you know it's the HRO species classifier? How does that fit into this ecosystem? Do you know? I don't know the Etoro species classifier. Is that used natively on INAT? Do you know? It's uh, some kind of AI thing. That cool. You, know, you take a photo with your phone and it sends it out. Just so I don't know that one. Okay. I do know that Merlin, which you can use for audio, which is mostly good in New Zealand, especially for the introduced species, uses all of the audio that people like me have uploaded. I once got an email telling me, can you personally, because you're one of the top 1% of uploaders, go look for more birds in New Zealand and upload them, which is cool. INAT uses all of the human classified, yes, this is this, yes, this is this, to train its AI, and it works incredibly well. That's also used in the app Seek, which uses INAT data. So yes, we're aware, we're trying, it's really, really cool. All right, do we have any questions up the back? I don't think I've seen the cube go up that way. There we go. Hi, Richard. Do you have a favorite bird? Yeah, uh, I do have a favorite bird. It's a Jura falcon. Um, I have logged somewhere around 10,000 checklists on eBird. I, I may have an issue. Um, every, <laughs> thank you. Uh, every single checklist has shown yet again that I am not in the right location to see a Jura falcon. Um, but I just think it because it's a giant white falcon. Like, that's just really cool. And at the end of the day, when I was a kid, that, like, that was cool to me. And I didn't, I'm still a kid. So, cool. Um, well, I think we have time for yeah. maybe one. My iPad's not turning on. Yeah. One or two more questions. Do we have any hands down the front? What is your least favorite bird? <laughs> <laughs> Scientifically, of course. That's a really interesting question. So I just got off the bus this morning, and in between getting on the other bus, I logged gray-cheeked house sparrows, because the house sparrows here are, are from a certain population and not from another population that's in India, which are white-cheeked. And I think that's fascinating, and I think people who don't like house sparrows are stupid. So it's really hard for me to answer that question, because naturally my mind goes to pigeons. Um, my least favorite bird, you know, I just really don't like penguins that much. I just don't care. <laughs> I just like don't care about them. Like it's cool, they're they're great, but like I like the Pawaka Waka. This thing is it's a it's a denizen of death. That's awesome. <laughs>